Nagbabalik tayo dito sa Kababayan Today. I want to say thank you to our panelists for being here. Napaka-iksi ng panahon. We will invite you back da- dahil napakaraming kailangan pag-usapan. At ngayon naman, kasama natin si Professor Brandon Riley uh, para sa No History, No Self. Maraming salamat po. Amidst the murderousness, corruption, and continued poverty of the Filipino people during Ferdinand Marcos' dictatorship in the 1970s, one man emerged as the sharpest thorn in the president's side, Ninoy Aquino. Benigno Aquino Jr., affectionately known as Ninoy, was born in Concepcion, Tarlac, to a prominent landowning family in 1932. He was linked by family to the wars of independence against Spain and the U.S. and to national politics during both the American and Japanese colonial eras. Educated in elite schools, he worked as a journalist before running for office himself. Ninoy's foray into politics began when he was elected mayor of his hometown in 1955, at 22 years of age. The year before that, he married Maria Corazon Cori Sumulong Kofanko. Together they would go on to have five children, one of whom, Benigno Noino Aquino III, is the current president of the Philippines. It was during his career as a senator that Aquino came to national prominence. A critic of Marcos during the period when he was still a democratically elected president, Ninoy was unlawfully incarcerated by Marcos upon Marcos' declaration of martial law on September 21, 1972. He would be jailed for eight long years, much of which he spent in solitary confinement. Ninoy at one point staged a hunger strike for 40 days to express his protest and lost nearly a third of his body weight in the process. The news that he had suffered a heart attack in 1980 would ironically provide relief for Ninoy as it led to his release from prison for the purpose of becoming a medical exile to the U.S. Free from Marcos' surveillance from 1980 to 1983, he used his precious time to foster international opposition to the dictator who ended Filipino democracy. This period of hope was short-lived, however. Nino was assassinated upon his return to the Philippines on August 21, 1983, 32 years ago today. In this horrifying way, the man who, through his activism and opposition to Marcos, seemed poised to begin democracy anew, met his untimely end. If there is any consolation to be found in the tragedy, it is that his life partner, Cory Aquino, would carry on the fight. Cory became a critical figure in the peaceful revolution in 1986 that overthrew Marcos and restored democracy in the Philippines. Her well-known hand gesture, El, for Laban, meaning struggle or fight, became one of the icons of the revolutionary movement, a perfect representation of what democracy necessitates. Cory, of course, went on to become the Philippines' first female president during the 1988 elections, the first free ones since 1969. Ninoy will be remembered forever as a martyr for Philippine democracy. One of his most famous statements was that, quote, the Filipino was worth dying for, end quote. As we commemorate his life, what are we willing to undertake, sacrifice for, and strive towards? How do we show, through our actions, that, to paraphrase Ninoy, the Filipino is worth living for? <laughs>